the Joe Rogan experience. Let's go to the pyramid itself. So you have a very fascinating hypothesis as to what the pyramid, or theory, as to what the pyramid actually was. Mm -hmm. And um, it's based on where the supposed king's chamber is, where those passages go through into it. And what do you think that thing was? Uh, well, my first book pretty much describes what I thought it was uh, in uh, 1998, which was a power plant. It, the book is entitled The Giza Power Plant. Uh, my second book uh, has evolved, and, uh, and I describe it as a, an electron harvester. So, you know, it's kind of like, you could describe it as both, but in, uh, <clears throat> in today, uh, when you do, or, you know, people in any, in any any decade, they think of a power plant and they see these huge chimneys with, mm -hmm. you know, smokestacks. Or a new them. plant. Yeah, or a new plant, you know, or a power plant, dirty, nasty, unclean. Mm -hmm. uh, but an electron harvester, clean, pollution-free, not a problem. Has that been achieved conventionally, I mean, today? Is there a thing called an electron harvester? I, I think that actually uh, <laughs> when you look at a generator, that's an electron harvester because we don't create electrons. We just harvest them. It's just how we do it. And and so, you know, when it when you say an uh, electron harvester, you could you could say that, you know, uh, say a, a wind generator, uh, you have a windmill, mm -hmm. and you have a generator inside it, and then you're collecting electrons off the commutator in a generator. And, and that's where the electricity and, comes from. And that's where, that's your electricity. Right, or yeah. hydroelectric, you'd use right, the flow of the water. Yeah, you don't right. you don't create the, like, you just uh, release them. You harvest it from a process. You harvest them for, through a process. And the process that you think they used in the Great Pyramid involved those shafts? It involves a lot of things, yeah. It's not just one single thing, it's a system. Not not a single thing. So when you look, can we show at, a photo of that? Do we have a photo of uh, the pyramids and the shafts and where the king's chamber is? Where you, I know you've described this before. Mm -hmm. Do you have a photo of? I do. Uh, it's uh, it's in the. Uh, yeah, I was just trying to figure out which one you want. Okay, wanted. this is perfect. This this works. Yeah, so, that works. <clears throat> so uh, these names, the king's chamber and the queen's chamber. You don't think that that's actually a king's chamber or a queen's chamber? You think it's something else? Well, out of respect to the Egyptians, I uh, call I it what they call say. Call them, they, yeah. Okay. But I do have a different uh, terminology for them as, as they function. Now, the initial surface of the Great Pyramid is covered in smooth limestone, right? So it's polished and shiny, and apparently it would collect insane amounts of light. The uh, well, the outer surface of the the Great Pyramid mostly is missing, and, right? Uh, but it, it has been described as if it, if it was finished, and and depending on the polish that it received, yeah, it could it could reflect a lot of light. Um, <clears throat> the uh, do you think that that had something to do with the design of this power plant? I don't think I don't there I don't think there's any part of that pyramid that did not have did not serve a, a practical function. Okay. So so this is the image that you have here and what right. this image shows us is the king's chamber, the the various shafts, the southern shaft, the northern shaft and these shafts have been described as portals to stars because people have looked up through there and you go through the shaft you see stars but what you're saying is something entirely different. What mm -hmm. do you think these shafts were for? Well, I think they serve two different purposes. Uh, <clears throat> actually, four different purposes, if you will. Because uh, in the, uh, the theory that I propose, which is, I don't know, it's a speculation, a theory. It's more, it, the whole process is kind of like a heuristic uh, process where you're grabbing information, you're moving air, you doesn't matter what what source you 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 get you're getting it from, right? Because when you are looking for answers, you know you look everywhere. You try and find, you know, you look everywhere. So when I was going through the uh, the process of re 
like trying to figure it out. I was collecting information from everywhere. The uh, and one of the, you know for the so, for the southern shaft and the northern shaft of the Queen's Chamber, that was a huge mystery to me, and uh, I <clears throat> and I tried to to fit it into the oh, what were they doing? I mean, if you look at the details, the facts of their design and what the ancient Egyptians were doing, why they designed them that way, you have two conduits coming into a chamber, but they're not connected to the chamber. And uh, we didn't even know they existed until 1872 or four. Uh, Wayman Dixon. Can you show me that image again, please? So yep. w the, they're coming into the chamber, but they don't enter into the chamber, so they, they stop. Th their, original, their original design had the... The, the, the shafts ending five inches before coming into the chamber. So you had like five inches of limestone that, mm -hmm. was, that was left in the block. So did someone remove that limestone? Yes. Uh, Why did they do that? Wayman Dixon, because they were examining the chamber and they were poking around. And uh, Wayman Dixon, it is reported, so the legend goes, uh, noticed a crack in the wall, and so he took a rod and pushed it through the crack. And the rod, it didn't meet any resistance, it kept going. So he uh, had his uh, worker, a worker come in, Bill Grundy, with a hammer and chisel, Ugh. and say, chisel, chisel the limestone around that. God, people are stupid. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, they, they did. Yeah, they didn't have uh, ultrasonic thickness. To no, them, right? but still, god damn, to have the <laughs> arrogance to go and chip away at the pyramid because well, you're you look curious. At, look at how, you know, I, 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 I don't care for revisionist historians because, you know, you have to consider what people were doing, uh, their mindset in the mm -hmm. day. And then you, I, I try to look at the, on the bright side, right? It's like I don't look at it as a negative thing because... If somebody hadn't opened up those shafts, we wouldn't know about them. Right, and uh, and it's the same with the same with the the chambers above the king's chamber. Without Howard what Howard Vise and his uh, military expedition blasting his way up into the pyramid, we wouldn't we wouldn't Oof. know about them either. You won't be. I mean, there's a lot there. I think there's a lot there right now, and it's being investigated now. Um, but there's th things that have been revealed through scanning, like muography, the Mu the uh, Scan Pyramid Project, uh, and they found that large void above the Grand Gallery. Right. But, and so, you know... Which that, is larger than the King's Chamber, right? Uh, it's longer than the, the King's Chamber, yeah. And so yeah. is that that's not even represented here on this? It's about the size of the cabin on a, a Boeing 707. Like, wow. Uh, <laughs> so... If these shafts came through and then they met limestone at the end, what do you think was going on? Um, in order to answer that question, uh, I had to look at the rest of the, the pyramid, okay? What was it doing and uh, how was it functioning? And so one of the key pieces of evidence uh, that I used to propose a process that was going on is the northern shaft. And the northern shaft uh, uh, has dimensions and, and has an appearance uh, that is similar to a waveguide that you would use for microwaves. And the dimensions of it uh, would, be, would be approximate the uh, wavelength of hydrogen. So w explain a waveguide. How does that work? Yeah, it's, it's like uh, a waveguide is uh, the, to transmit micro microwaves. Uh, <clears throat> uh, electromagnetic energy, you know, in the microwave region. And it, uh, it is uh, passed more efficiently through a, like a tube or waveguide. And that's what they use. I mean, that's, they're very complicated uh, systems. You know, and so how did this represent in your mind what a waveguide looks like? 
Actually, you know, the uh, the idea of a waveguide came to me from a, a guy. Uh, we, we were talk we were talking about the the, the pyramids, and I, I was I carry I used to carry a you know schematic of the Great Pyramid in my back pocket, and I meet an engineer, and I go, hey, hey, come here, <laughs> I start, I start going through. So, what do you think about this? Because you know, I was like, I was looking for answers, suggestions, right. brainstorming, right. anything, right? And and it's like. So anyway, these these uh, these shafts right here, and he looks at it, and he was into electronics, electronic engineering, and he's like, "Hmm, they look like waveguides to me." And I thought, "Well, that's interesting. Uh, they look like waveguides. Uh, okay, what if they are waveguides? How did they function? I mean, what what were they used right. for? What were they using waveguides for in you know ancient Egypt?" And uh, and so I started to go down that rabbit hole, uh, and that led me to the Queen's Chamber. I said, "Okay, waveguides. Uh, you need a medium. You need wave. You know, microwaves to go through a waveguide. What? Uh, what frequency of microwave was it? Right? And you look at the dimensions, and you come up, you come up with a match for hydrogen. Oh, how the, do you do that? How do you come up with a match for hydrogen through the dimensions? Yeah." Yeah, the, uh, the the wavelength of hydrogen is uh, eight point three oh nine inches, and the uh, the width of the the, the uh, northern shaft is eight point four inches, and a waveguide uh, generally uh, has the the wavelength, and then about half of the wavelength. In height, so it's a rectangular shaft, just like all the shafts are. Right. Yeah. And the well, the yeah, the queen's chamber shaft is a little more square than the king's chamber shaft. So it had a different function. Different function. Yeah. So these waveguides, you believe, what what are they connect collecting, and where are they getting it from? Um, <laughs> good question, Joe. <laughs> they uh, they had. Uh, we are bombarded with uh, with microwaves every every day. I mean, it's the the signal from they say the Big Bang, and you know, there's a, a it comes from atomic uh, hydrogen in, in out in the universe in outer space. But so it, we're being bombarded, and you believe that these we're passages so, were collecting this? Yeah. So anyway, so then you say, okay, uh, if we Build a device, and we say, oh, and we want to energize hydrogen. We we bring it to a higher energy state, and just like you know, in a laser, uh, where you have uh, microwave amplification through stimulated emission, right? So, uh, so if we want to collect energy that is in a gaseous medium, say that is hydrogen medium. And the electrons in the hydrogen are pumped up to a higher energy state, and we want to collect the energy in that. Introduce a microwave signal, uh, direct it through that gas, and stimulate the emission of the energy. Collect that energy and shoot it up the southern shaft. And so that was like, okay, that that might work. So what kind of gas? Hydrogen. And so where are you getting the hydrogen from? Queen's chamber. So there's hydrogen in the queen's chamber, and how does it get in there? The shafts. But it doesn't come in as hydrogen. That's that's a part of the uh, the theory in the Giza power plant was it. You know, it, th there are two chemicals that are introduced into the chamber, and uh, the chemicals mix and they boil off hydrogen. And these chemicals are just coming from the radioactive waves of space? No, no, no. The chemicals, I believe, are uh, manufactured and delivered uh, to those shafts and coming. Okay. Right. So they add some sort of chemicals right. to it, 